So lads, 2K lied to us. 2K lied to all of us at the start of the year. And it is about one of the most divisive things in all of my team. And it is the removal of the auction house and the addition of the player market. As I've said from the start of the year, whether this is a good or a bad thing purely comes down to what 2K do. Because 2K have full control of the player market and it comes down to that. Um, and yeah, not a, not a great thing. Not a great thing, to be honest, um, I think recently. But like, I'm just, I'm just saying like, this is something at the start of the year, this is like the argument for it, that 2K said, we want to even the player field. We want to give everybody equal opportunity at getting every single card. And um, we want to make basically make it so that people that bought MT don't have an unfair advantage. And you know what? If they actually f went through with that, it would be fine. Like, but from the start from the start of the year to now, they have lied to us. They have. Because if you wanted to if you think about the best players in the game, how many of them have been in the player market? Freaking Michael Beasley, Amethyst, for his time. Kyle Korver. Uh, Porzingis, right now. How many more? Kyle Korver now, maybe? When we think of your Wembys, your Kobe's, your uh, your Giannis's, your LeBron's, all lock-ins. None of those guys were in the player market. Every one of those dudes was a lock-in. So we're looking at, from even from the start of the year, the cards, the best cards in the game all being lock-ins. So does the player market, like, does it help? I don't know. Like, I would say in that regard, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But at the same time, I do think for a while cards were more attainable. Because if you guys want to look at this set right here, pre-Christmas, so you guys want to look at, where is it? The, here's the season set. And this is the prime example, is a prime example of it. Because like some of these were just so expensive. But as far as the tis the season set goes, we were looking at $50, $10, $10, $10, sorry. This, is, this was expensive. Ignore this set right here. Cause you didn't have to do it. You just needed to get Booker. So it was $50 or $50, $10, Ignore, ten dollars, fifty dollars. So one hundred and twenty dollars got you to complete every single one of these sets. But then, as soon as we went into season four, there were like, or as soon as we went above that, there were no lock-ins. So like, this was an expensive set to complete, or to get all the cards, as far as I remember. And this to complete was. No, I think this was fifty dollars as well, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe a little bit higher. This was not too expensive. Um, these two sets right here for what they were either. These two sets were a little bit less. I'm pretty sure it was like 300 to lock in both of these guys. And I got you two Galaxy Opals. But then we had the start of like, we had like this set where it went up to 200 and something K. It was like high 200s. And like this set was the start of it all. 300 K, 300 K. 26% discount, 150k and a 26% discount. Make it 99. If this was last season, this would be 99k. It would have been 99k if this was season three. 148k for five cards. This would have been, again, nine, the level ups had always been, even the ones that were almost equivalent to this in price, um, were always 99k. And then again, 300k. But we're also looking at a set that's 199k for three. And the biggest thing is, is that when we're looking at this set right here, it's just going to be expensive again. And now to what 2K have done is even worse than that. So they've raised the price of all the sets. So they've made it even harder and harder to compete as far as completing sets for cards. For lock -ins. Thank God Yao Ming sucked. But now what they've done is with Michael Beasley last week, they put the card in the pack market so that you can't even buy it with MT. You can't even get cards with MT anymore. How is that an even playing field? 
And it's and you want to know why? Because it's not. It was never about an even even playing field. It was about 2K's wallet. And the worst part is 2K are making less money this year. 2K are making less money this year than last year. How are you making less money than last year? When last year everything was ran by the damn coin bots. And I get it. Something had to have been done. I, I get it. I get it. I'm not going to... I'm not going to say, like, oh, 2K did the wrong thing by reacting. What 2K should have done was, like, sat there and uh, let everything kind of go to crap like it had been for a while. Because I just think that it's somehow gotten worse. Like, the one thing that I always thought was, you know what, the player market, do, do I not like not having auctions? No. Because I'm somebody that, like, I thought the play, what the player market has done, as far as negatives, is that um, it has made the mid-tier irrelevant. Mid-tier cards are relevant. Like, if you look at tomorrow's set, most of these cards are going to be irrelevant. Whereas in the past, obviously, a big thing used to be, if a card absolutely sucked, it would just lower the price. Like, for example, Jalen Brunson's going to be like, there's no point getting him, but in a previous year, he might have been, like, a 20,000 MT pink diamond, and you might, uh, Knicks fans might have picked him up and being like, okay, yeah, cool, he's the price of an Amethyst, so let me go and pick him up. There's Amethyst more expensive. And that's kind of what would happen in other years. But whereas this year, nah, they're all going to be the same price. So, simultaneously, you've obviously got, like, your Paul Georges and your Buckers, who are going to be cheaper than they should be, but most of the mid-tier cards don't exist. It makes half the cards irrelevant. But the fact is, is that most of these cards aren't even available in the player market. So to make it fair, the player market makes it fair. Whereas last year, maybe, last year, for the All-Star set, every single card was available in the auction house. So every card had a set value. And you see, there's 11 cards tomorrow. There's 11 cards tomorrow that are not available in the player market. So how exactly is the player market meant to make things, uh, you know, even for the players? How is the player market meant to even the playing field when you can't get cards on the player market? How is the player market meant to be evened when the cards don't exist on it? When the cards only exist via VC? So, you know, maybe you can say the player market is evened because a no money spent player last year had no chance at getting like the top tier cards because they were being priced out of the, um, they were being priced out via guys buying MT. So maybe, by the same thing, maybe it's even the playing field because those people that bought, because those people that bought MT, um, they're not getting it anyway because it's not available via MT. But at the same time, the only thing that it's done is even the is even the playing field, as in, if you are a hardcore grinder of the game in the past, whether it be sniping or whether it be playing, and, you, and this set had to come out last year, and you saved up your millions of MT, like a lot of people have, you would have been able to buy two or three Galaxy Opals, half the pink diamonds. Whereas right now, if you've got... I've I had a rough estimate of what this is going to cost. And you need about 2.8 million MT to get one Galaxy Opal. That is roughly what I calculated out to. 2.8 million MT for one Galaxy Opal. Um, which is scandalous. Just absolutely scandalous. So all that the player market has done now is made the cards more unattainable. But, I'm sorry, more unattainable for no money spent players. More unattainable for guys that just grind the hell out of the game. But more attainable, but a little bit cheaper for those who spend money. If you guys were somebody that bought MT, now maybe buying VC will give you enough money to buy the cards. It was never about making things even. It was never about making the game more fair. It was never about making cards more attainable. And maybe you could have argued a couple of months ago that it was getting like that. Because at the end of Season 3, the Tis the Season set very much, I think, was affordable. I think the Tis the Season set was way more affordable than I think 2K meant for it to have been. I don't think 2K were meant for it to have been this cheap. And for this many people, to, and for so many people to have been capable of locking in the sets and getting themselves Wembenyama and Kobe. I don't think 2K meant for that, which is why they bumped up the prices of everything to make it even less attainable. And now, not only that, you can't get anybody. In last year's set, if you grinded the game for three or four days and you got yourself 60,000 MT, you could have bought two Galaxy Opal, two or three Galaxy Opals. 
Right now, if you grind at this game for two and three days, instead of getting 60,000 MT, you could probably make twice as much, probably 120,000 MT. You're not getting any of these. You're gonna have to grind 26 challenges that aren't gonna be easy in order to get one of these guys. And you can't even sell them back because in a freaking player market, it takes away 60% of your MT. This was never about being fair. And I, I want people to stop arguing 2K's case for this. This was never about being fair. It was never, ever, ever about being fair. It was to make 2K more money. And you know what? It's not even working. It's not even working. And the reason why it's not working isn't that people aren't spending money on the game. Because the amount of God squads you come up against more in every mode is more in every, every year. The reason is, is that getting rid of the auction house was one of the dumbest things they've ever done for customer retention. I know so many people that have quit my team because of no auction house. So many people in real life are like, why did they get rid of the auction house? I'm not playing it. That they'll go and play, they'll play a different game. So many people have given up this game. And I actually do think that dollars put into the game per person has risen. It has risen, but it's not risen by enough to make up for the absolute SH1T show that's become my team in 2K24 and players they've gotten rid of. And by the way, I think 2K24 is better than 2K23, but like, it's the only two, my team it's better than. It's better than 2K23. 23 was terrible. Up until the start of June, 2K23 was terrible. After Ju June, the month of June was very good. I'll give it that. Just like the month of January is pretty good this year. But I'm going to say it again. 2K lied to us. This was never about fair. This was never about being fair. This is about making them more money. And they screwed up that because they made 7% less than expected.